Hello, my name is Kate. I'm the head of user support and a meteorologist. I will be telling you about dozens of pro features. Let me start by saying that not everybody needs the pro version. Uh, so for many, many cases, the basic version, the, the basic forecast is just fine. Maybe the situations when the pro can, can help. The first one is when you need some extra accuracy. It will help you understand the probability of different forecasts and highlight when you should not trust the forecast. So the other situation is when you're going to a new or a tricky weather area, meaning uh, I'm sure you all have these, these spots, uh, these locations where forecasts often fail. The first situation is extra accuracy, but it's also extra detail, meaning that you have hourly forecasts and for uh, with very high spatial resolution. Less features are uh, sport specific, meaning they, this is something that only sailors need, only fishermen need. And the last bit that builds upon the first two on accuracy and specific activities is the customization. You need a special combination of weather parameters and uh, the pro version lets you customize the app so you can see exactly what you need to see. One other thing about pro, what I personally like about Windy app is that I will be describing today's features, but we are currently adding new features. Also, we have a friendly user support. I don't know if you, any of you have affected our user support, but yeah, we do get this feedback that, wow, we did not expect such user support. And we have meteorologists on staff because sometimes it can get overwhelming to read the forecast, to understand which model works better in your area, what other weather data there is to help you make a decision. And we also make educational content. We have reels, how you can forecast fog for yourself or stuff like that. So I encourage you to sign up, follow us, like, share, subscribe, you know, that sort of thing. And the last thing is that when you are a pro user, you can use your pro on up to five devices like your iPhone, uh, your iPad, your Android with the same account. And then uh, there's also, you can also access some of the pro features we have added uh, on our web version. And the first bunch of features would be about accuracy. And one thing I needed to tell you about accuracy, that if you have accurate data, unfortunately, it does not guarantee accurate results or accurate outcomes because in between data and the decision you make and the weather that is actually happening, there is this big gap, which I call the visualization and analysis, because the way, it, even if the data is very accurate, like the data we have in the app is the, the, as good as it gets, it doesn't get any more accurate than that. Still the way you visualize it and the way you analyze it can really make a difference on what decisions you're going to make. For example, do you look at the forecast from one model? Or do you look at the forecast from different models? Are you taking into account data from a weather station and so on? So this is all very important. And we are, of course, we are working on the data bit to provide you the best data there is, but also we are working on visualization and analysis to make it easy for you to make the best decision. So we have the free version, the basic version and the pro version. And comparing to the free version, the pro version has more data. It has more forecasts. For example, two more global models, ECM, WF, and ICON 13. And then we also have six, six regional models for France and the surrounding territory. So on the slide here, the asterisk means that it's not only France, but the surrounding territory. So for France and the other parts of Europe, it's a Rome. For the US, it's HRRR and NAM. Uh, for Canada and a part of US, it's HRDP. And uh, for Europe, ICON 7. And for Germany and the surrounding territory is ICON D2. We have 10 days of forecasts. Of course, that is for global models uh, because the regional models are just uh, less. Uh, they, they give, they give uh, three, five days of forecast. That's just how they run. And we have 10 days of past weather. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hugely popular feature, uh, but um, it helps you see, for example, has there been a huge snowfall in the past, in the past 10 days, or could it be that there were well or currents uh, and now the water is muddy, for example. Now the new exciting feature is our experimental forecast for the coastline. We took, I mean, we, the special meteorology guys, 
uh, took a GFS 27, the global model, and then they did some magic with AI and fed high resolution digital elevation model, which means it's very high resolution topography. Uh, they fed it into the AI model and then they put it over the GFS 27 model and they made 10 day wind forecast for the global coastline. It visits uh, 200 kilometers inland and 200 kilometers into the sea and ocean. And this is only wind forecast, 10 day wind forecast with three kilometer resolution. And this is something that will be released in Windy, we, we are hoping in a couple of weeks. And we would really love for all the pro users to try it. Uh, we will of course notify you when it's done. This is all about the forecast, but forecast is not all the weather data we have. We also have data from a weather station and you can see it on the map or you can find an exact weather station and see what the current wind is. But for pro users, we came up with something we call the live wind mode. It's the little bubbles, as you can see on my screen, that show the most recent wind observation. And that could be uh, like five minutes ago or half an hour ago. So it's very recent and we display them all on the map. So you can see what is happening right now. I would say it's great for short-term planning. And with this mode, you can also see if the weather model you have chosen is forecasting it well at the moment. So if you see that this uh, weather model is not doing great, you can switch to a different model and then use it for the rest of the day. The opposite of live wind is the weather archive, you could say. Uh, this is something that we recommend using for long-term planning. For example, it's winter now, but you will have a vacation and you need to find the best place and time uh, with, with great weather. Right, you need to find uh, somewhere with consistent winds, or you need to find somewhere with no wind at the particular time that you want to go, or you have to make sure that it's not too rainy, so that while you are kite surfing, your family can still enjoy the attractions. For example, and this is uh, what the weather archive is for. There's statistics, meaning average numbers of um, wind and precipitation and temperature. But also there is the detailed three hour forecast for the, uh, for the 10 years where you can uh, click on any day in the past 10 years and see uh, the weather that has been happening. This is all about the data that we have, something like that is uh, on our servers. But when it comes to visualizing the data or analyzing the data, there are things that you can do to increase the accuracy, to have a better detail. And uh, for these two features, you don't need to do anything. Just say, yes, I want the HD mode. Yes, I want the best model mode. It's already in your pro account. So the HD mode, what does it do? It shows you the forecast in the best possible spatial resolution. So if you have HRRR or Arome, for example, if you have Arome that has the resolution of 1.25 kilometers and you switch the HD mode, that's is you get exactly the highest possible resolution of the forecast. If you have bad internet, you might want to switch it off, but otherwise I would keep it on for uh, all of the time. Okay. So the best model mode is something that takes a bit of explaining because there's no one word for it. What you're looking at on my slide is compare mode. You see the weather, uh, the wind forecast from different models and you see a bold white line, this bold white line is the actual wind that was observed in a weather station on that spot. And you can see with your eyes that some weather models are closer to the bold white line than the others. So they are better at forecasting the wind on that spot. However, it is the 21st century and it would be crazy to make you look at this um, graphic and uh, try to guess the best model. So we, this is something we calculate on our servers. We take all models, we take window observations, the actual wind, and then we compare them for the last 10 days and show you the best model on the spot for the last 10 days. So this it does change over time. All you have to do is just choose the best model mode on your spot, and then you will get the forecast from that exact model. So this is the way to increase the accuracy, to have a better forecast with just pushing a button. There are other ways to improve your accuracy and you would have to do some analyzing. The first thing is you can look at the 
weather fronts, atmospheric fronts, and isobars on the map. Isobars are just lines of atmospheric pressure, so they show you highs and lows, cyclones and anticyclones. And then uh, we have weather fronts for North America and for Europe. And what this helps you to do is to understand the general situation in the atmosphere. For example, is there a new cyclone forming? Is there a cold front coming to you? And this can help you really monitor the weather, understand the weather. And for example, if you're going offshore, but you have seen the forecast that this cyclone is coming, then you will be prepared. So the next thing you can do is you can compare wind and precipitation from different models on one chart. This is something we call the compare mode. You've already seen it on the previous slide, but now uh, there is no white line. I just want you to focus on wind speed forecast from different weather models. What do I see when I look at this picture? I see that all models are giving roughly the same forecast. And this means there's a very high chance that this is what is going to happen. That if the, the wind is going to die down and then pick up again. Sometimes it's a completely different picture. It's it looks like a spaghetti, like this, when all the models are giving different forecasts. And this means, usually, that the forecast can go either way. So, for example, if you uh, don't really care that uh, what the wind speed and direction would be, you can take your chances and, and go anyway. But if this is a high-risk situation for you, then you might want to choose an, a different spot or maybe choose a different day. I have talked about compare mode on this YouTube channel before. So I will not go into deep. So I wanted to show you uh, features for specific activities. So the first batch of features is the swell map and the ocean current map. When you click on any point, you can see the exact value of swell height and direction. And then on the ocean current, this uh, ocean current speed and direction. So for fishermen, I'm sorry, there is a error on the screen. It's for fishermen and fisherwomen, of course. Uh, the one thing we have added recently is the sea surface temperature map, 10-day global forecast. And I'm, I'm not a fisherman myself, not a proper one at least, but what, we've, uh, what, what the users tell me is that they need to see the places with the, with the gradients in what in sea surface temperature, meaning the places where it changes rapidly, and that helps them find the places where fish gather. We'd love your feedback on this feature, as always. The other thing that is helpful is the fish pro profile. It has everything that we think the fishermen need, and we've had some good feedback on it. It's the bite forecast, it's the atmospheric pressure, the swell, the currents, everything that a fisherman will need to plan uh, for exact, exact location. The, another set of features is for wind uh, lovers, uh, people who need to find great wind. And the first one is the wind alerts, uh, when you can set up for each spot uh, that you're interested in what wind speed do you need what wind direction do you need because not all spots work in all wind directions we will look for this kind of wind in the forecast and as soon as we find it we're going to send a push notification to you so you don't miss good wind i've also heard that our users use this alarm for keeping an eye on bad wind conditions for example if you have a boat in a marina but you are like two hours drive away, you will set up an alert for that place and see if the bad wind is coming in, you can go and secure the boat, for example. Another thing that's in the pro is the gust map. I wanted to show you an example. So there's the wind on the left and gust forecast on the right. And so you can see that they align at some point that it's windy and it's gusty, but there are some places that are not so windy, but you can still see the gusts. I, I always recommend to check the gusts as well, especially gusts from different weather models. Okay, uh, a few more things for sailors and maybe for hikers or anyone who goes off the grid is the offline mode. So you enable it and then windy update and refresh forecast that is downloaded to your phone. And then when you go offline, you will have access to the forecast. You will still be able to see it as though you're online, on the map, and for your favorite locations. Another thing for sailors, or maybe for some hardcore sailors, uh, is the wind barbs. I personally prefer them to the little white lines that represent the wind, because 
with them, you can clearly see the wind direction. And you can see, for example, that the wind is um, how it's changing directions near the coast. The wind speed you can see quite clearly as well. So this is something, if, if you if you're used to this kind of thing, then the good news is this is available in the pro version. Okay, the last bit, customization. We have two things here to cover. The first one is the custom profile. This means that you can create your own set of parameters in the, in the order you need them to be from choosing, and you can choose from all the weather parameters that we have uh, and from all weather models. For example, on the left part of the slide, there is wind speeds from different weather models, kind of like a compare chart, but in a form of a table. Then I've added sea temperature, uh, tides, and UV index, but it could be anything, anything you need in the order you need. For example, you can create several ones for different activities or for different spots, whatever, uh, whatever you need. Another thing you can customize is the wind color palette. And this scary red <laughs> map just shows you uh, that all, all the areas where the wind is more than eight knots. I just decided to pretend I want to stand up paddle and I know that too much wind is bad for them for paddling. So I wanted to see, to highlight the areas that are good for this outdoor activity for stand up paddling. And then uh, with this, with this kind of map, I, I don't have to look too much into it. I can clearly see where is my go-to area and no-go area. Okay. And this will apply all across the app. You will see it on your windy, windy bars, on your main screen and on the spot page. If you don't find some feature, if you don't know how to uh, switch it on, you can always ask our user support. You can write in the comments. You can contact us via Instagram. We'll be happy to help.